So, Maxi, we're looking forward to an Ulster Ladies Championship decider, a competition, of course, that you haven't been involved in uh, for, for a couple of years due, due to COVID. And I suppose after the exit from the All-Ireland Series, Max, it's it's good now to end the season where you're chasing a bit of silverware. Yeah, um, it is. You know, um, usually if you don't win the All-Ireland, the season ends uh, on, on a downer. And uh, funny, that's not going to be the case. And ironically, we would have pushed hard for this competition to be played prior to the All-Ireland. We felt it would have been great preparation. Um, but I suppose maybe in a way now it's a, it's a godsend because it is going to be a nice opportunity to, to you know, to, to finish off in a final and, um, you know, we have a good record in the Ulster Championship of late. You know, we've only we haven't uh, won, the won the first one in 2015, and they lost the semi final in 16. We haven't lost a game in the provincial competition since that. So it's a look. It's a competition with a with a good record, in, and we're 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 looking forward to Saturday now. Yeah, uh, what's it been like in the camp then? Uh, with the girls after that defeat in the All Ireland series, because the feats are always hard to take, particularly at that level, and you lose to a side who have been the the dominant force in, in ladies football for the last number of years. Was it easy to get them refocused for this one, Maxa? Ah, uh, look, it, 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 it's always great to have like, another game to to look to. Um, uh, after a defeat like that last year, we had the Waterford game, which was a dead rubber and really meant nothing. And uh, you know the girls gave a great account of themselves, not because they wanted the end of the season in high, and there was nothing at the end of it. Um, at least uh, this year, if they can pull a performance out of the bag at the weekend, you know, there's a chance they'll have a, an Ulster title and you know a, a fifth Ulster medal for a lot of them, which is uh, which is is no mean feat. So um, it has been nice to have that to, to to focus on. Look, it doesn't make the disappointment any less. Um, you know, there's an awful lot of people. You know, heartbroken after the Dublin game. You know, we knew we had a we had a great shot of um of of of, of taking Dublin on the day. You know, we feel we're as well fixed as anybody to take Dublin. Just about whatever it was about the style of play we have, they seem to struggle with us more than more more than most. So, um, that but that but was disappointing. You know, but look, it is what it is, and that's football and that's sport and life, isn't it? And you just have to, you know, uh, roll the punches and pick yourself up and dust yourself off and go again and um, I think we are quite fortunate to have a, to have, have an Ulster final to look forward to the weekend Yeah uh, you are of course missing one of your leaders and, and, and you missed her for the for the Dublin game as well Emer Geller with, with a cruciate injury and a, it's a big blow to you having uh, a, a lady like that in the back missing with all the experience that she has Maxi Yeah look and it's above all else it's just so disappointing for Emer you know I think she's had her best year ever in a, in a Donegal jersey and you know she was just Playing really, really well, and it was a it was a huge loss to us. Um, likewise, Neve Carr, um, she was a, a follower of COVID for the for the Dublin game, and that was her two corner backs all year. And you know they had a huge part to play in even our kick out strategy, which you know we struggled against Dublin to get out from the back, and um, we feel had we had those two girls. Not, never mind from a defensive perspective, but from the from that aspect of it to help us get out, I think it would there would have been a, a big addition to us. So you know it is really disappointing for the two guys that they missed that game and look disappointing for Emer um on the whole. You know where club season is over and our season's over effectively, and you know she's a long recovery road ahead of her. But listen, Emer's you know one of the most positive girls you'll ever meet, and you know um she does everything with a with a smile on her face, and um you know. There's no doubt she'll go at her rehab now, you know, hard and um, and she'll be back playing football again next year, hopefully. How are you fixed for the, the squad this week then, uh, apart from Emer? Uh, anybody else not available or do you have as full a strength squad as, po- as possible for yourself, Maxa? Ah, uh, yeah. Look, uh, not currently. We're not. We're, we we'll train again tonight, and we'll um we'll see how people are fixed. A couple of wee knocks and nickels as you're always going to have, but um yeah. Look, by and large, I think we we have everybody. You know, it's a it's a it's a tense time at the minute for everybody. You know, COVID has taken grip again, and especially in that age bracket. And uh, you know, you're you're hoping that people just get through and they don't get brought down as a as a close contact or a or a, or, a, or um or a positive case themselves. So you know, the closer you get to the game, you the more confident you are of having everybody. But um, no, I think everybody's in good spirits and looking forward to going now and the weekend. What kind of game are you expecting at the weekend? Um, what do you make of our man the way they've been playing football this year, Maxi? Uh, look, Armagh got to an All Ireland quarter uh, semi final last year, and you know they put it up to Dublin for 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 a good half an hour of that game. Um, you know, and Amy Mackin, they probably have one of the best forwards in the country. Definitely, probably the the most sought after forward in the country. Anyway, if anybody if there was a transfer market, everybody would be looking for. And um, her sister Blind's a very good player as well. Also got an All Star, the All Star full back, Clodagh Cambridge last year, and then the evergreen Carlin O'Hanlon um, is is in the mix. So listen, they have five or six really really good players, and um, you know. 
they have a long history with Donegal and many a battle going back through the years. So there's no love lost between the two camps. Um, but look, at the end of the day as well, look, they're they're you know they're playing in Division Two, so you know they may not have be as battle hardened as what we are in terms of playing against the bigger teams. And you would have to hope that that's a, that's an advantage for us. But um, look. Typical Ulster team, pretty defensive, you know, get lots of bodies back and run the ball hard and, you know, um, no, there's no uh, no shortage of confidence in their, in their ranks, you know, they're quite a confident group and, you know, um, barring on arrogant and, um, you know, we feel quite aggrieved the way the whole thing was presented last year, you know, there was very little made of the fact that we couldn't play in the competition and, um, and as far as we're concerned, we're unbeaten in five years and that's the way we look at it and that's the way we want to stay after the weekend. So, look, we, um, we're going to come out swinging at the weekend and, um, and put, put the best foot forward because it's a, it's a title we feel that we, you know, we deserve and, uh, you know, we're, we're up to it and um, the quality of player we have and, uh, you know, the, what's on the line, I think, um, I think it's the makings of a great game. Yeah. Uh, what's the record been like against Dharma, Maxa? Well, look, at, uh, I don't like to talk about uh, records or anything like that, but look, at as a source of confidence, you know, we've we played them in the in the previous two Ulster finals we've been in and in, in 2019 and 2018 and you know we we won each game well in the end you know goals are massive in Indian football as you know and you know we got goals at the right time in both those games the last game I think we had maybe two three goals on the board after a couple of minutes um and uh, you know that kind of set the, t the t tone for the game the previous Ulster final we got three goals just before half time so you know they came as big blows to our man um, but then our man really built up to the quarter final in 2018 but look we've lucky enough we've won the last three times we played um uh, and a league match before that in 2017 but look that counts for nothing no this is probably a different our team to back then they've you know they've they've freshened up their team they've you know there's some really good young players um jamie clark's younger sister has joined the forward ranks so she's a uh, excitingly forward and um they've a new goalkeeper in since then who's um you know regularly hitting the halfway line which is very rare to see in ladies football so listen it's going to be a it's going to be a real battle and our will hold no fear of us at all and uh you know and us no fear of them so it's uh it's it's the makings of a of, a, of an exciting game and you know to have a trophy on the line for both teams both teams and exited the all ireland the same stage uh the quarter final weekend um three weeks ago so we'll all have a time now to, to lick our wounds and, and and get back on the horse again so um i think you'll you'll see no hangover from the all ireland series you'll just see two teams going hammer and tongs to try and one another off the title yeah has Haley park been a, a ground that's been kind to you in recent years max yeah yeah probably personally it's one of my uh one of my favorite grounds to go to Um, that's where we played our man the uh, quarter final in 2018 and we also had a, a joust with um Mon on there in the in the first round um in, in twenty eighteen. So look, yeah, we've when we've we've trained there a number of times. So yeah, look, we're 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 quite familiar. It's a it's a lovely journey for supporters, you know, forty odd minutes on the road from Letter County. So it's you know, it's a, it's definitely a, a nice location and a nice big open pitch and you'll definitely not be blaming the facilities anyway if we don't get over the line. Yeah. Finally then, Max, and, and you're probably not going to confirm anything here now with me, but uh, um, after Saturday, and if Donegal were to lift a, an Ulster title and you were to come out of the right end of the result, uh, it quite possibly could be the time that maybe some of the the um, older players, the, the players that have been around the block for a long time, and I don't know, maybe possibly yourself as well, Max, that, that they'll be able to think it'll be done after the game. Yeah, yeah, look, it is. Um, you know, we've, we've made no bones about it. You know, we uh, we've probably I've called this a, a golden generation a number of times and you know we have a number of key players that are the wrong side of 30 and you know they have given Donegal um, unbelievable service and if we are lucky enough to get over the line at the weekend some of them will have five Ulster medals in their pocket and uh, you know some of the greatest footballers ever to come out of Donegal male and female have never won one let alone five so you know they'll um, if any of them do decide to 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 head off into the sunset, you know, they'll, they'll go with their heads held high and they'll know that they've given, you know, Donegal absolutely everything. Um, we hope that doesn't happen. Uh, you know, I, I feel that we're getting closer all the time to the Dublins and, you know, not that, not that you know, we're, we're blaming bad luck or anything, you know, we're very much aware of our own feelings against Dublin this year and last year, but, you know, had we got the rub of the green and, uh, you know, uh, I think we, we could be heading for an All-Ireland final. You know, Carla Rogue, player of the match, scored two sixes, only game she's played this year. She's been injured for every other game, you know. So, you know, that's that's just, you know, uh, bad luck as well. You know, things like that just seem to go against us. Um, but I, I, I do feel the team are, are growing all the time and they're getting better. And, um, you know, the 
the quality of performance from the the likes of Eve Hegarty and and, and Katie, these girls this year has been just it has been you know off the wall, and uh, there's definitely more in the tank. Um, so look, fingers crossed they do decide to to, to give it another go and they don't hang the boots up at this juncture. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a number of those girls have played a hundred times for Donegal now, and um, as I said, they'll be they'll go with their heads held high, but there'll be a lot of a lot of people with interest in ladies football Donegal hoping that that's not the the road they take after the weekend but look that the 2022 season's a long way away and um there's a really exciting club championship coming in Donegal after this weekend so you know it'll give people a chance to change focus and uh, and then the other thing as well is you know it's due to be a split season next year so it'll even be shorter again so that might be something that maybe might appeal to the girls if we can if they can um you know if there's enough interest and motivation to stay about for another year because i do believe they're really really close and i don't think it'd take very much for them to get over the line whoever's whoever's okay. at the helm yeah, well, listen, Maxi, there's the focus at hand is, of course, the Ulster final this coming Saturday against uh, Armagh. We wish you and the girls the very best of luck in, in that big game this weekend. Lovely. Thanks, Ashley. Thank you.